I'm going to call the um, August 13th meeting of the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission to order and proceed to the call to order. Uh, Candace, if you would please take roll. Judy Arnold. Here. Jeff Blanchfield. Here. Carla Condon. Here. Damon Connolly. Here. Craig K. Murray. Here. Gary Phillips is absent. It's empty seat. Jack Baker. Here. Alternate seated in the audience, Lou Caius. Here. Christopher Burdick. Here. Roll has been taken. Thank you. Uh, clearly, we have a quorum and thus can conduct business. Uh, before we move to um, approval of the agenda, I'd just like to point out this sheet or card, as they call it, that we have uh, up at the clerk's desk and in the back of the room on the table. And, and that's uh, if you wish to speak to any item, uh, you have the option of uh, putting your name, address, agency down. So we have your correct spelling for the minutes, which uh, is important and some people are, are ticklish about. So uh, if you would, please fill that out if you wish and hand it to Candace. She then hands it to me and I have an idea of how many people will be speaking on which items so we can help manage the meeting. Thanks very much. Um, go, going to the agenda, uh, I will assume that the commission approves the agenda and this I hear a voice indicating that they do not. And I don't see anyone objecting to the agenda so we will follow that. I do understand though that object, uh, agenda item eight uh, dealing with uh, matters at uh, to, in Tamales, uh, the applicants for that agenda item are in transit here and are having some traffic problems. So uh, if the commission will bear with us, if they don't get here in time, we'll just keep bumping it back one uh, to allow them to get here in a timely manner. Okay, uh, open time. This is the time on our agenda that we set aside for members of the public to address the commission on matters that we do not have calendared for discussion this evening. So if anybody, and that's where this little form is helpful, uh, filling it out so we, so we know what you're interested in. And I do not have a, any forms and I don't see anybody interested in addressing, but I think I spoke too soon. Uh, different item, sorry. Different item, okay. Well. Then I'm gonna move uh, then to the uh, consent calendar. We have six items on the consent calendar and uh, I'll just read them out so we have that for the record. It's the review of the end of the past fiscal year's financial report, approval of our minutes from our last meeting, approval of the cost of living adjustment to our employees' salaries, consistent with our policies and our practices, and authorization to approve expenditure for this year's audit. And a progress report on our work plan, uh, this current fiscal year's work plan, and uh, information items on current and pending proposals uh, before the commission. So I will entertain a motion to approve the I'll move cons consent. Second. Discussion. Okay, I have a motion and a second, and Craig has the discussion. What I'd like to do this for this and procedure is if someone has an issue with one of the agenda items, just let me know what it is. We'll take it out, we'll discuss it, and then put it back in with the other items so we can adopt it or not as in one vote. Craig, your, your issue. Oh, it's just item six, it's not a real big issue, just an a inquiry. Okay, it's, can, can uh, I just hold it on that and say we'll pull six out and come back and let you explain that. Any other items the commission would like to have a discussion on um, other than just voting on it as part of the consent calendar? I see none, so Craig, tell us what your issue is. So, um, this is a review of uh, pending applications and it's talking about reorganization of 91 Glenside Way and Keen have, has it talked about a fee waiver and that seems to be kind of unique to the commission. It might be 
precedent setting. Maybe you could just explain to the commission what where that's going. Well, yeah, thank you. So uh, the re the proposed reorganization of 91 Glenside Way, which is described on page three of our uh, agenda report for number six, in of itself is a unique proposal. Um, so the applicant is going to come to you at your next meeting, presumably in September, ask for uh, either a fee waiver or reduction, given what he is ultimately looking to do is switch service providers. The service sewer is already provided by San Rafael Sanitation. Uh, his desire is to switch out and get connected to Las Galinas. Um, given our policies are a bit uh, quiet on this, uh, we'll certainly do a good job of explaining the scenario as well as the precedent that is there. Um, but given I wanted to at least get this item on as information, I thought it'd be best to wait and hold off on the uh, fee waiver reduction request till our next meeting. So that's why it's been broken into two. Very good. Thank you. So this is just information only letting us know what's coming down Correct. the line. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. All those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? The motion passes and we shall move to the public hearing matters. The first one is agenda item number seven that deals with the countywide water municipal service review, the draft staff report. Uh, and in this, the staff is recommending that they introduce the document tonight any questions, any comments that either the commission or the public has can be registered. And we continue it to our next meeting, which will be a special meeting to take this up solely, I understand, so that this will be the subject matter of the report. The Municipal Water S Service Review Report will be the only item on the agenda and we'll have considerable time to discuss it. So, uh, Keen, do you want to give us uh, a brief uh, well, yeah, briefing? Very, <laughs> very briefly, and Chair, you covered it pretty well. So a few weeks back, your staff did notice uh, this hearing originally to bring you this complete uh, staff report on your uh, countywide uh, water municipal service review. Uh, study that's been in the works for now about a year. Um, given we uh, were a little late in getting it out the uh, door, plus it's a rather sizable document, we are looking for the commission to essentially just open the hearing this evening, um, receive any interested comments from attendees, and then schedule a special meeting to continue this uh, for September 10th, uh, Thursday. I would ask, and I didn't put this in our report, um, that instead of meeting at 7 o'clock, if we could meet at 7.30, uh, given I have a, a speaking engagement with our friends at the League of Women Voters on this very topic, so I don't want to uh, 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 miss either. So if you would indulge me on that uh, uh, option, that would be wonderful. And then on the 10th, uh, I would provide uh, a formal presentation specifically on not only the numerous findings that you see in the draft staff report before you, but there are a number of recommendations, recommendations that include action statements for this commission to pick up if you choose. Uh, so with that, I do know we have a number of representatives from some of the affected agencies, uh, as well as perhaps members of the public. So if you'd open the hearing and then again, continue it to a special meeting on the 10th of September at 7.30 in this room, that would be our recommendation. Okay, um, this is the report. It's over 250 pages long. I expect each one of you to read it from cover to cover. <laughs> now, it's, uh, I frankly found it fascinating. Uh, I, I read it uh, for a number of hours to, today, and I guess because I'm a demographic nut that uh, I, I enjoy reading this, but it's, it's really got a lot of information in it that helps us understand better our government and particularly how it, the, the water aspect of it works in Marin County, and I really recommend it to you. So I'm going to ask the commission first whether they have any questions of the executive officer before we open the public hearing, and which we will continue to our meeting on September 10th. Any questions, comments, commission members may have now? I've got 
two sheets uh, with uh, people that wish to comment to the commission this evening, and I'll move to that when we open the hearing. But again, Craig, you have a comment? So I, I want to thank Keen staff and putting together a real comprehensive report. I know there's a lot of hard work going in this. And one of the sections, I always look to the appendix, and there's some great information in the appendix, and actually uh, very detailed information on recycled water. So I, I think even, even though it's, it's towards the back of the document, it's, it's very important. Uh, one of the things, I, Keen, maybe you could respond to this, is can we show uh, the capacity of producing recycled wa water? Right now it talks about where recycled water is being produced in North Marin and Las Colinas and uh, what the capacity of each of the systems would be, uh, and that that might be interesting to, to show. Um, for instance, um, Las Colinas is showing 0.5 MGD. I believe it could go up to 5.5. So maybe just checking in with the uh, general managers of each of those districts, and that absolutely could, could be a one or two liner. But thank you uh, again. Thanks, thanks for your work. Okay, Craig. Any other commissioner wish to um, uh, ask a question of the executive officer or make a comment? If not, I'm going to open the public hearing, and uh, I have two uh, requests to speak. The first one is from Scott McMorrow and followed by Jennifer Blackman. Good evening, commissioners. I want to thank you for having me, uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you this evening. And I too would like to uh, acknowledge all the hard work that went into this document. Uh, it's, a, it's a very well put together document and Mr. Simmons and his staff did a great job putting it together. Um, so, so I represent uh, the Inverness Public Utility District. I'm the general manager. And I would say that 96% of, of our representation in this document is great. Uh, and and I, I have some questions about a smaller percentage of it, about 4%. Uh, and um, unfortunately for me, the, that 4%, it's a significant uh, issue that, that I wanted to talk about. But before I got to that, I wanted to share a bit of information with the Commission that I'm not sure you're aware of regarding unfunded pension liability, which is a big deal locally, uh, statewide, and nationally. And I wasn't sure if you were aware, I know that this document tries to address that, but I wasn't sure if you're aware that with the fiscal year that just closed, 6-30-15, public agencies are required to provide in their audited financial documents a uh, a number, basically, of what their unfunded pension liability is, similar to what the OPEB was, if you're familiar with that. So that kicks off this year. And uh, it's actuarial driven. And uh, my agency and some other ones uh, went to CalPERS to do the work. Smaller agencies um, can, can contract with CalPERS. And they're going to provide, basically, the number. They're going to tell us what our unfunded liability is. Now, they were supposed to provide that in July, and they missed their deadline. And then they were going to do it in August, and they missed their deadline. So now they're telling us September 8. We should know what that is. And I point that out because perhaps uh, that information could be incorporated into this document if, if need be. Um, and then there's the issue, the 4% or however you want to view it, of, of what I see as a potential conflict is, is what's defined as peak day demand and how that's represented for the Inverness Public Utility District. So for those of you who may not be aware, peak day demand is the, uh, it's, it's calculated on a calendar year and it's what your highest day of production is. So for example, for, for, and, and you take that information and you report it to the State Water Resources Control Board on an annual basis, along with a bunch, bunch of other information. Now historically for IPUD, it occurs in July, usually around the 4th, that weekend, whatever that weekend's gonna be is when the peak day demand occurs. And um, the, the concern I have is that the peak day demand as defined in this water study is based on a five year window of information. And it projects that our demand, our overall demand will go up approximately eight tenths a year and that in 2023 we won't make peak day demand. So, so it's not saying we'd run out of water because we have a supply that would back up any shortfall, but it is saying we could not make peak day demand in 20, by 2023. 
And I understand um, st the LAFCO staff's inclination to try to have a, a uniform rubric to compare water district to water district. And I think that's probably where the five-year window comes from. However, I have looked at a 23-year window for IPUD, and I want to share that with you. If I may, I just pass these around. So we have, we have a lot of data. It's what we do is we compile a lot of data. And this is production data for 23 years, starting in 1991 and going to 2014. And what it demonstrates is our production demand, which is, in essence, it's, it's higher water intensive than usage. So it would include leaks. It would include inadvertent uses, whatever we produced. You'll note that it's flat to slightly declining. So what that calls into question is what this 2023 date might mean for not meeting peak day demand. And I understand, um, so this is LAFCO's report. This study is your guys' report, and uh, you can choose to stick with the five-year window, and that's, that's fine. My concern is this, is that uh, where I live, there are uh, a lot of politically active people, right? They're highly educated, and they're interested in where they live. And I would be concerned that perhaps the concept that we wouldn't make peak day demand in 2023 <clears throat> could be used by individuals who were uh, less than receptive to continued development in the area. And, and what that will lead to, I believe, if that occurs, is LAFCO's report's going to say one thing, and we're going to say another. And we're just going to stick to what we say peak day demand is. And that has the potential just to create friction between my agency and your agency. And um, you know, I'd like to avoid that if possible. So I just wanted to share that with you. What, what my thoughts were on the peak day demand concept and, and why I think it's a concern. Short of revisiting the formula of how uh, the LAFCO document comes up with peak day demand, I would request then that the public comments, at least by the agencies, be included either in the document as an, as an addendum or an appendix, or at least on the website so that there's some uh, documentation that perhaps there was some disagreement about how that number was reached. That's a request that I have. And then um, the final thing that I want to do is to try to get clarification on the process of what this is. So on the website for LAFCO, it says there's going to be a 60-day public comment period on this document. And I'm hearing September 10th, which is less than 30 days from now. So uh, as you will recall, the first piece of this study was the public agency profile. And in, go in going through the profile, that is presented in this draft document, I note that there's changes in, in what we saw when we first looked at that. And given that I would like to review that uh, public profile and also provide uh, intelligent written comment on the actual recommendations that are being made and the determinations that are being made by IPUD, I'm wondering what the actual timeline is. When, so the commission will pick this up in September, but what does that mean? Do you vote to approve or does it go for a period of time after that? Or, or whatever, I guess. That's my comments, and I'd take any questions if you had them. If not. First, uh, Scott, you shared your concerns with the staff, I assume, so. Yes, I, in, the, okay. in the first round, so the, the, the concept of peak day demand has not changed since the agency profile came okay. out. Right. And in the written comments that we provided on the agency profile, in it was the graph that I handed to you today. Okay. Okay. Um, but to, to your question about where we go from here, we do have the hearing set for September. And then, Keen, uh, help me with my memory of so, what we will do thereafter. Presumably on September uh, 10th, if the Commission feels that this draft report that your staff has prepared is ready for a formal public review you will then tell staff to initiate a 60-day review at that time oh okay so does that answer the question thank you yeah that's very that okay clears it right up thank good. you good good okay yeah, yeah. Uh, Craig so on uh, page 147 that's talking about IPUD and water supply the very last bullet 
in the very last sentence in that bullet, it, it says this supply surplus is expected to accommodate peak day demands going forward with projected high day usage equaling 37.7 percent of the available supplies by 2023. So in reading that, it seems like there, there's adequate capacity. You're saying it, it, that that's not accurate, that needs to be modified? You know, I haven't had a chance to, re I got, just got this document on Friday and haven't had a chance to go through it in, in total. I, I believe I read, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I believe I read elsewhere in the document it says we will not meet peak day demand in 2023. Okay. So there might be some conflict. Then. Perhaps. Okay, so there's a question, and I would assume you would get a hold of the author of the report to see Absolutely, yes. what it says and where the comments may be because it is difficult to pick out a sentence in a 250-page yes. yep. report. Yep. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. We appreciate them. Sure. And, and, and uh, thank you again, Keen, for the great work. Okay, Jennifer Blackman. And I, I'm leaving it up to the commentators to indicate whether they represent themselves or a, an institution. Okay, very good. I'm Jennifer Blackman. I'm the general manager of the Bolinas Community Public Utility District. And we received the report on Monday. Our board has not reviewed it yet. I'm uh, uh, reiterating, essentially here to reiterate some comments that we've made in writing thus far, although I do expect a robust uh, discussion at our board level and additional comments to come. So I, I am here in my capacity as the general manager of the district, but my comments haven't been yet, you know, weren't vetted by our board before my coming here. I really appreciate the opportunity to raise a couple of key points for your consideration tonight. I think Scott and I both felt it would be important to be able to give you a few thoughts to have in mind when you're reviewing the report, which um, as the commissioners and Scott and all of us acknowledge has been just a tremendous effort by the LAFCO staff to put together some very important information for the residents of Marin County about the people's water supply, our water sources, and other really interesting information. And it's a very complex topic and a great one for our communities to be as informed as possible about. Um, all of the water suppliers in Marin County take our responsibility to provide the public with safe drinking water and to manage this resource in a sustainable and responsible way we take it very, very seriously. Our relationship as staff and then also board members with our customers has to be one that's based on trust. It's one that's based on the fact that when we make representations to our customers that we're telling them the truth and that we're accurately representing information about our water supply, about the quality of our water, about our plans for the future and how we're gonna spend their money on improving and sustaining their water source and their source of water supply. So it's really important that this report gets all of those facts right. I would, um, I haven't done a percentage analysis like Scott did. I would, I would agree that it's an overwhelmingly, uh, overwhelmingly the report is, um, as far as I know, accurate and uh, strives to present a tremendous amount of information to the public. But there are a few key points, um, and I'm speaking only to the, about the Bolinas Community Public Utility District, that I wanted to just highlight out for you now when you have a chance when you're looking at the report. We will provide detailed comments by, you know, for September 10th or thereafter during the 60-day um, period. But uh, uh, this is, I think, my third um, effort to provide comments. We've, we've provided comments twice in writing, I think, and we've also met with Keene um, out in West Marin. And so that's been a really constructive process. Um, here are my um, two or three key points. There's a finding, essentially, in the report, and I, I haven't read the whole thing yet either. I've read about the first 100 pages, which is the, are the sections of the report which present the overall uh, findings and determinations and conclusions, and also some specific generalized findings and conclusions about each of the agencies, but it's the section that then concludes before the agency profiles start, and I haven't had a chance to look at the appendix yet either. Uh, 
one of the, so the first key point I'd like to make is that there's a conclusion or a finding in the report that usage for most of the public water systems, water usage, including the BPUD, has been, that's what, how we um, summarize the acronym for our agency, uh, has been intensifying. And this is not accurate. Uh, we, it's understandable, I understand how the conclusion was reached because looking at a five-year window and we had an outlier year because of a significant water main relocation project where we needed to use a lot of water to flush our system and we also had, unfortunately, uh, an unusually large leak. But um, if you take that year out or even if you include it in and look at a slightly longer window, the facts about the water production in Bolinas are completely clear that the water usage is declining. Um, one of our board members uh, in one of our iterations of comments provide, um, created this graph that just looks back to nine years. And I can provide copies either tonight or when we provide our comments that show consistently on average about 4.6% decline in water usage in the Bolinas Utility District over the last 10 years. We have been commending and thanking our customers for this. And it's very important as a matter of, frankly, my personal integrity, the personal integrity of our board. There are other staff members who are out in the community talking with people, thanking them for the efforts they're making to conserve, that this report accurately states the water usage in the community. The, this um, relationship of trust is one that we really value and it's really important to us. And I would then echo Scott's remarks about whether or not it's, it's LAFCO's report, the Commission's report, and whether or not the verbiage has changed when you analyze our data or not. Uh, we would then like the opportunity to have our data presented as an appendix or as a follow-up document so that I can provide it to customers or other people who might be interested to ensure that we've provided the data that substantiates our, water, our reduction in water consumption. So that's one point. Another point uh, has to do with a finding that the treatment capacity in the water districts is sufficient um, to meet peak day demand with the lone exception of Bolinas. And I also, we also take issue with that conclusion. It, the concept of peak day demand is a complicated concept. Um, I think this reflects just a little bit of a misunderstanding about the statistic, and it leads to a recommendation that the district should invest what would be considerable resources in expanding the water treatment capacity of our treatment plant to, to meet that uh, apparent shortfall. However, and we will provide this data again, when we look at it on a consistent basis, our peak day demand has basically held very steady it's, it's highly correlated with annual holiday events when there are, is a huge influx of visitors out to Bolinas. We have four days of storage for, of, that is equivalent to four days of peak demand storage. We've never had a problem handling these holiday events or uh, large leak events where we might have an issue where we lose a considerable amount of water, which is another way that our peak day demand numbers sometimes come into into effect. And so again, I think that the, the, the inference of intensification of use and or a recommendation about increasing the treatment capacity of the water treatment plant is important to understand these numbers because again, it comes back to the integrity, the professionalism, the trust issue. Are we responsibly managing this district and looking at what we need to be doing? We are not recommending to our customers that we increase water treatment capacity because on average we operate at about 50 to 60 percent treatment capacity on an annualized daily basis. We don't believe that the way we should be spending our customers' money is on increasing treatment capacity. If the facts change, if circumstances change, and there is a significant move to a very different situation with peak day demand, we would of course revisit that. But we've identified and prioritized in a capital improvement plan and presented it to our community through numerous meetings and hearings the important projects that we think we need to spend their money on and that we go to them and ask 
for their trust and endorsement in our recommendations. So it's very important to us. Um, and then finally, there's, um, I'm interested, I have no basis to um, factually um, present alternative information about the older and poorer um, trend that's suggested in the demographic information. Apocryphally, we aren't seeing that. We are seeing a tremendous rise in real estate values and prices in Bolinas. We are seeing a trend towards part-time uh, residents. There's no doubt about that. But that group of, of new residents to the community are substantially wealthier than the existing demog demographic. Those are our customer. Those people are our customers as well. We'll be paying our annual and consumption charges, and we're not seeing. Uh, a trend in the community which would suggest that there's um, some, there might be, I mean, uh, it's here and there issues of financial hardship that we work with, but we're not seeing an overall trend. But I don't have, um, I don't have numbers to provide you that would, um, that would contradict that. I just, I wanted to just make the comment for your consideration. <coughs> and um, finally, I would invite any of the commissioners to come out to Bolinas if you can find us. I think that the internet has blown our cover, um, and we would be... Uh, well, just follow the road signs, don't worry. <laughs> you don't even need them anymore. You just have your navigation system telling you where to turn. And the BPUD office building is located on a paved road, so you're even able to get to us without um, harming your tires or the axle on your car, and we would be happy to, um, to give you a tour of our facilities or um, answer any questions that you might have. Ms. Blackman, thank you very much. Do any members of the commission have a question of Jennifer? Thanks thank so much. Thank you. Uh, Scott Tai. I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Simple. Thank you very much, commissioners. Um, I'm here representing Marin's Surfrider Foundation. I did for 10 years sit on one of the coastal water boards, so I'm pretty well up to speed in terms of the informational capacity, and I totally agree with both the first Scott and with um, Jennifer that it's really hard to compare very small service areas that have very unique capacities, whether it's part-time residents, full-time demand. But I just wanted, I just observed it over the the internet in the last three or four days. I don't have a hard copy, and I'd like to get one before the next hearing. But I think there's two areas that you might want to capture that weren't captured. And both Jennifer and Scott alluded to it, and every water district in California has the problem, and that's water loss and leakage. It's not in the report in any significant way. And, and to be honest with you, the California Water and Water Association of California, they do a fairly accurate um, description of what that loss is. And that's water that's metered out of the ground or off a stream, put into treatment, and then somehow lost, okay, in the system. That's significant, and that needs to be looked at. It's anywhere from 8% if you're a great district to 25%. So that has some significant issues and some trends that might not might not be um, obvious on the first, the first look. The other thing is uh, the Board of Supervisors is holding on August 25th a hearing on the local coastal plan update. And I think the local coastal plan affects five of the six, six districts that you're reviewing. Mm -hmm. The only district it doesn't represent is Marin Municipal. North Marin is out in Point Reyes, Marshall area. And all the other ones are coastal districts from Muir Beach North. So I think it's really important that you somehow tie what the coastal plan is looking at doing and in some ways their recommendations and their review because it is a cross-agency review. Um, and more specifically, yesterday's Coast Commission hearing down in, um, in Chula Vista had a public hearing, statewide public hearing, on sea level, sea level rise guidance, and this is where Surfrider comes in. And they, I believe they approved it. I couldn't get an answer this morning from the Coast Commission because they're all down there. But it's a very interesting 250-page document, and it has very, very specific guidelines and guidance for 
how we're looking forward with our water infrastructure, all of our roads, and I think it would be behoove the LAFCO staff to, to take a look at that. So with that, I'll just I'll leave you with those ideas, environmental, structural. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Any questions of Mr. Tai? Thank you, Scott. Anyone else wish to address the commission on this matter tonight? We'll be carrying it over to our next meeting, which is on uh, September 10th. And if you have comments, I urge you to get them to the staff in writing. Writing is far superior uh, to oral comments and, and being able to remember what you've said and what your points are. And we have received some very good written comments, and I want to comment on that because they've been extremely helpful. One, yeah. one question. Craig? Uh, Scott, for Surfrider, just curious, do you have any input on desalinization? Desalinization? And uh, is, is, does this uh, Marin County Surfrider have any position on that? Yeah, could you come up, uh, Scott, and uh, speak in the microphone so we can all hear you? Our, na our national organization has a position, and our county chapter has a position, and the county LCP and the Coast Commission has a position. So we're sort of all in unison. Now, my former water district appeared before the Coastal Commission when they met at the Civic Center two months ago and suggested that they were pursuing the idea of a desal option. And I will just tell you, if the door is open, if Stinson does it, Bolinas, Inverness, Point Reyes, Muir Beach, all would then look at that as a possible alternative. The way that the, the supervisors proposed LCP that's still in the draft form that's being looked at on the 25th suggests is that there be no desal from ocean waters, that they could use desal to reclaim waters or treat groundwater that's been contaminated with salt water, but that they not take ocean water directly for treatment. And I, I think that's kind of our position, Surfrider's position. We were pretty adamant about MMWD's push, and I think you realize that that kind of got to a, to a stalemate, and that's kind of where it's at right now. But just one more thing, since we did, you asked me. Um, the sea level rise issue affects MMWD just as much as it affects the coastal communities. So I think this sea level rise issue and what's, what are going to be the risks and the threats to water sources, to contaminated groundwater, and what are the solutions is a very it's a countywide issue so state, yeah. it's a statewide issue it's a statewide issue it's a planet issue yes yeah <laughs> thank you thank you scott okay uh well i'm going to continue the hearing to our september 10th meeting and uh move on then to and chair just for the benefit of uh noticing it will be in this chambers at 7 30. 7 30 everybody underlines 7 30. In fact, write it down, because I'm sure you'll forget it, um, on the 10th. Okay. Uh, we have next up uh, another West Marin issue, and that deals with the Tamales Village Community Service District, but uh, are they here yet? They are here. We have our applicants in attendance. What a deal. Okay. Um, well, this is uh, item number eight. It's uh, a business item, but... Members of the uh, public are invited to comment on it if they wish. Um, proposal for annexation of property to the Tamales Village Community Services District. Thank Keen, you. Keen, do you want to? Yeah, I'll take a couple of minutes just to provide a quick overview. Uh, before the commission is certainly a deceptively intriguing LAFCO proposal. <laughs> Uh, that involves a landowner's uh, request, Alex Derbs and Rebecca Hodges, who again are in attendance this evening, who are seeking the annexation of a little less than an acre worth of unincorporated territory that's divided between these four legal lots um, and bring them into uh, the Tamales Village Community Services District, which among other things is the entity that your predecessors many years ago tasked with being the public sewer service provider for uh, the community of, I think, about 200 or so full-time uh, residents. Now, the proposal itself 
is coming to you with a recommendation to approve from staff um, with with the qualifier that you know when we went through the review process uh, there were a couple of interesting uh, policy issues that came up and while none of these policy issues and they're specifically involved potential amendments kind of rose to the level of us wanting to recommend them we did want to just walk through them quickly for the Commission's benefit to make sure that we are at least on uh, the same page uh, so with that very quickly baseline um, the affected territory itself all these four lots are all in the district's sphere of influence as you can see on our map uh, behind Lou and Chris uh, in fact the Commission added the three lots that are colored purple, blue, and orange back in 2009 to the sphere is part of a comprehensive update. Keen, if yes. I just may, you, you will find this on page three of your staff report if yes. your eyes are failing you as mine are. <laughs> and, and so uh, three of the lots are joined together and located again at the western terminus of 2nd Street. And it's anchored, or this group is anchored in the middle by uh, the applicant's primary residence uh, at 263 2nd Street. The other two lots that are right adjacent to this uh, residence at 263, um, they're vacant, they're undeveloped, but they have the potential, okay, under county zoning to be able to be developed into their own single family residences, okay? Now the fourth lot is non-contiguous. Uh, it's about 300 or so, uh, so linear feet to the uh, east of the other block. Uh, this lot is also undeveloped uh, and just by way of uh, history buffs interest, uh, it formerly was one of the main exit entry points for the now long gone Tamales uh, train depot which used to be located at 290 Dillon Beach and I'm going to come back to that property in just a bit because there is of uh, interest to LAFCO. Now, um, the underlining purpose, as you would imagine in this proposal, is to allow the applicants to connect their residence at 263 2nd Street to the public sewer main. Um, and that would allow them to uh, get rid of an aging septic system and then also allow them to do some home improvements with the county. The other three lots have been added to this proposal really as a cost savings mechanism or economies of scale uh, effort on the uh, part of the applicants and it sets them up to be able to eventually connect when the time is right to the sewer system without coming back to LAFCO, okay? Now, when you take a look at this proposal, it's already in the sphere, so your immediate priority is just to consider the timing factors. Uh, certainly, the bulk of our staff report addresses those factors required by the legislature. They all check out. Uh, when we look at your policies, they basically all check out with the loan exception of these three potential boundary issues come up and I'm just going to quickly describe them and again their boundary potential boundary amendments that staff's not recommending but based on your preference you may want to talk a little more about uh, the first potential boundary change is a reduction okay and under your policy certainly you could uh, amend the bound or amend the annexation to take out those three undeveloped lots given there's no existing project and there's no project really in the horizon. Um, the second potential amendment you could do, and I apologize, it's not gonna be very clear looking at this map. You are gonna have to reference your, your staff report, but there's uh, a flag lot, okay, just north of 263 2nd Street. Um, I call it in the staff report uh, a panhandle. And it's a section of a neighboring lot that just so happens to be owned by our applicants as well that provides access to these three lots at the end of 2nd Street. And so given your policies and certainly your direction under state law, there is probably merit for you to consider expanding the physical boundary here to take in that, that portion of the flag lot that's also in the sphere. Now as we provide in the report, there's some headaches with that, be, with the uh, assessor and elections department. So our recommendation is, uh, let's, let's leave that alone. But certainly, you are going to end up creating a, a district corridor unintentionally uh, by going forward with the proposal. Uh, finally, I do just want to note, because it comes up uh, when we did the review, um, the mechanism for 263 2nd Street to get sewer is 
by way of a planned easement that is going to run south through 290 Dillon Beach. 290 Dillon Beach is that large uh, seven, eight acre property that's also in the sphere right below our affected territory. Um, and it's going to connect to the sewer line uh, that uh, is essentially uh, at Mounds Lane, I believe. Um, this prompts at least a consideration for the commission to add this property as well to the uh, annexation. However, uh, it would blow our CEQA document. We would have to do, <laughs> redo a complete new document. So there's a, a, a disincentive to do it that way. Also, we think we have a better solution, and that is to term approval on just making sure that the applicants record an official easement to get that gravity sewer uh, connection with LAFCO before we uh, finalize the final paperwork. And we think uh, the district is on board with that, and I believe the applicants are as well. Uh, so with that, um, again, we have uh, Alex and Rebecca in attendance this evening in case there are any questions uh, for them. Uh, our recommendation is outlined as alternative action one to approve uh, with no amendments and again with our uh, special term as uh, as I just described and provided in our resolution. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to give the applicants an opportunity to speak if they wish. It's not mandated, but if you wish, you may. If and if you're going to do that, you need to come to the microphone. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Um, the only thing that um, Keen didn't add is that the yellow parcel between the orange and the green, uh, I'm sorry, the red parcel between the orange and the green is where my wife grew up and her parents still live there. So, anyway. And my aunt lives on the other side. And her aunt's on the other side of the green parcel. So it's, anyway. I see. and have been there for 30 years or something. Thank you very much. 40. But, 40. but not, but not when the train, de train depot was there, right? Um, the, I believe the train depot was at um, this large parcel that is outlined here as within the district, but not. 290? Yes. Yeah. Um, we, uh, our current residence was the station master's house. All of this was part of the railroad. Um, the, there was a, a spur going up on the green lot and um, where my aunt lives at the corner of, um, of Cary and uh, second was a records shed. Thank you. Any commissioners have any questions, Craig? So, Keen, maybe you could talk about the dual annexation policy here. So, I understand that the purpose of this request is a, a, a failing septic system, like the connect to the sewer. So, if the other lots are developed in the future, then of course they would need to be connected to the sanitary sewer as well, or would they have the option to put in septic? Um, so, uh, with respect to the three undeveloped lots, if you were to approve their annexation uh, as part of this proposal, they would essentially stay stagnant. Um, and when development would occur, and again, so all three of these vacant lots could have a single family residence uh, built, um, the county would, because the distance of the sewer main is within 400 feet, they wouldn't be able to pull a permit without that sewer connection. So there's no septic option really available uh, to these properties going forward. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, does anybody else wish to comment on this proposal? Well, uh, since this isn't a hearing, I'll ask the commissioners if they have any questions of Keene or the applicants. Uh, before we move to consideration of the staff recommendation. I'll move to approve the staff recommendation. Oh, okay, a motion and second to approve the staff recommendation. Uh, all those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner oppose? Any commissioner abstain? The motion passes, congratulations. Moving on to uh, item number eight uh, in uh, Novato, uh, annexation of land to the Novato Sanitary District. Yes, number nine, I'm sorry, yes, thank you. Probably you're supposed to take that. I'm sorry. Okay, that well, yeah, well. <laughs> um, Keen. 
So uh, this proposal has been brought to you also by a landowner applicant. Uh, and is relatively straightforward, although there's a, a catch at the end I want to talk about. But ultimately, uh, the applicant is seeking the annexation of a single legal lot, uh, which is about 1.65 acres in size, and it's reflected in our map up here in yellow. Uh, it's located right now with a street address of 801 State Access Road, uh, about uh, 700 feet uh, to the east of where State Access Road and Nave Drive uh, meet up in Hamilton. And the purpose of the annexation itself is for the applicant to complete a term required of it by the City of Novato in step with the redevelopment of the site into a 48-unit uh, senior housing uh, um, apartment complex. Uh, right now, the site has been essentially left uh, vacant to its prior use, I think, in the 1970s, the last time these two warehouses were in any active use. Uh, one warehouse actually burned down. So right now, there's just one warehouse and the foundation of a second. Uh, now, given it's already in the sphere of influence, similar to your other uh, proposal you just heard, your policy consideration really is not whether sewer makes sense, but whether the timing of uh, allowing sewer uh, to this property makes sense. And certainly, our review of the report or of the proposal is, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, with one uh, question for the commission, and that is, uh, you're looking at a nine-acre district island, meaning. Uh, the existing boundary of NSD, Nevada Sanitary District, completely engulfs this uh, uh, area, an area that again includes our applicants' territory at 801 State Access Road, uh, about seven acres of the uh, railroad right-of-way that SMART currently owns and will be using. And then if you can see in the middle towards where the current Hamilton market is, you'll see kind of a grayish parcel. Uh, that's a, a property owned by Southern Pacific Railroad. Uh, it does have a, a, a zoning uh, allowance by the city of Nevada for some commercial development, so that's probably something that will happen down the line. But the question for the commission is, you know, when you receive a proposal like this, to what extent do you want to perhaps amend it and either uh, further reduce, if not eliminate, the island altogether given your directives under state law? So. As we detail in our report, our recommendation is, why don't you take in the portion of this right-of-way uh, that um, uh, is owned and used by SMART that is immediately adjacent to the property in question, as well as a little bit of the land to the south to provide some continuity to the existing boundary. Um, that's the cleanest, that's probably the easiest, and certainly that's the applicant's preference relative what you could also do, which is, well, you could keep going up the right of way and, and take more in. The issue is uh, the applicant would have to bear some additional costs by uh, each foot of additional right of way you bring in. Specifically, they would need to have their surveyor mark and survey the property for purposes of recording at LAFCO. Um, so our recommendation is that you approve the proposal with this modification or amendment to include the 0.5 acres of immediate smart right away. Uh, we did prepare a revised resolution for you to consider. It's in your packet. SMART correctly wanted to point out, uh, it's a handout, I, excuse me, um, that uh, not only um, uh, should we, and I agree with this, uh, make sure that they're exempt from any future taxes, fees, or bonds given they're a public agency and this is really just a cleanup on our end. That's included now in the revised resolution. Uh, they did want to make sure that in the record I note I had erred in my staff report, and I'm embarrassed I did it. I had suggested that SMART is in the business of allowing uh, blanket encroachment permits. I have been corrected. They are not in the business of blanket encroachment permits, and if NSD wants a uh, encroachment permit, it has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis, and I said I'd make sure that the commission knew this. So. Uh, with that, um, I will turn this item back. Uh, because the applicant is from Orange County, I suggested they sit this one out, and if there were any technical issues, we could continue it. But staff recommends uh, uh, approval as provided in our report with our revised resolution. In this revised resolution is this three-page um, three resolution with 1507 that was passed correct. out to us at the beginning of the commission meeting. Correct. Okay, just want to make sure everybody has it and understands. Okay, so 
the motion would be in, in, in following this, the staff's recommendation is to approve re resolution 1507 as the second resolution passed around. Okay. Uh, uh, so anyway, I'll move to questions. Craig, I see you have one. So Keen, this is on uh, page six the, at the top. And it's talking about future actions without any additional notice or hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I said turn that off. Uh, I'm sorry. This is on page six. Uh, and it's regarding um, future um, actions without any notice or hearing regarding the smart property. So basically what we're acting on tonight will provide uh, the option to the developer to include these properties without any further process through LAFCO. And, and thank you for uh, flagging that, uh, Commissioner Murray. Yeah, typically if you amend proposals on the dais, you trigger protest proceedings. But given this is a public agency that, is, uh, that the affected territory is a right of way, uh, there's a special out for LAFCO under our uh, enabling act that allows us to go forward while still waiving protest. So thank you. Okay. Thank, thanks, Keith. Okay, motion, uh, motion and second to approve resolution 1507, uh, the amended resolution on, per the staff's recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? The motion passes. And we will move to the next item, which is item number 10. Uh, request for outside sewer service with the San Rafael Sanitation District and the property owner on Margarita Drive. Thank you, Chair. So this is certainly a, a unique proposal that you have. Actually, it's not a proposal. It's a request before the Commission in which uh, an affected landowner uh, at 255 Santa Margarita and the San Rafael Sanitation District comes before you with a joint application uh, seeking your authorization to establish a new outside sewer service connection for the affected uh, property um, based on evidence that I'll get to in a little more detail of a failing uh, septic system. And I say unique for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, uh, this is the, uh, I believe, only the second time Marin Lafco has ever uh, received a request for an outside sewer service or outside service connection uh, in any uh, realm. Uh, since the underlining statutes became part of your charge in 2001. So to say the least, we don't have a whole lot of practice in, in processing these type of requests. And then second, and this is unlike the first request that you did get back in 2002 that ultimately you uh, greenlighted the city of Mill Valley to provide sewer to the uh, county fire station, I believe on Throckmorton Boulevard. Throckmorton. Um, mm -hmm. Um, this request comes to you in just a matter of weeks, essentially, and is premised in addressing what the applicant has provided you in some documentation as, again, a, a public threat. And that evidence specifically is based on his own contractor um, performing a percolation test on the uh, leach field, confirming that the test uh, fails current standards, and then looking at the septic tank that is apparently beyond repair and needs immediate replacement. All said another way, the applicant's uh, vendor has said, uh, you've got a failing septic and you've got a threat to the public right now. I will add, and I put this in our agenda packet as an attachment, um, given your staff is not experts in this particular field, we did ask environmental health uh, for them to look at the documentation provided by the applicant specifically for the purposes of just vetting the contractor himself. And so uh, Environmental Health has said, yes, the contractor, City uh, Pumping Inc., uh, does have the prerequisite training uh, and is on their list of qualified septic test uh, uh, agents in Marin County. So that does provide some uh, validity. Um, what they did not do, what Environmental Health did not do, and I did not ask them to do this, is determine if, in their estimation, this is a public health or safety threat. And I did not ask them that because ultimately the code asks that you uh, decipher and determine for your own purposes what is a public health or safety threat when dealing with this particular code section. Um, now, jumping ahead, 
Your staff is ultimately recommending that yes, uh, given the evidence provided by the applicant in good faith, let's go ahead and approve a conditioned outside service agreement um, and the conditions themselves outlined on page five. And this would include in particular making sure that the applicant would come to you with a complete annexation uh, application with fee uh, before we do any recording. We're also uh, conditioning that the applicant transition their handshake agreement in which he's saying I can get an easement from my neighbor to connect to uh, the sewer main. Uh, that's great. We want to see that recorded and in file with LAFCO before we go any further. And then, of course, also make sure that San Rafael Sanitation District's own terms and connection fees are paid before we go any further. So, again, this is a, a unique proposal. Staff certainly struggled a bit in this balancing act between asking for documentation from an applicant versus trying to get this to you in a timely manner. And so we are kind of having our learning curve here. And your uh, reaction and action on this item certainly will be a precedent going forward. And I'll just share with you, we do have another outside service agreement just filed with us. So apparently this is either a trend or we just happen to be in an odd outlier where two proposals have been filed a request back-to-back um, -back with LAFCO. So I'm going to stop there be happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm troubled by this one, frankly. Uh, this was a property that was bought in June, basically yesterday. And uh, there was no indication that there was any emergency. And normally properties like that are inspected, at least where I come from, as a requirement for uh, putting them on the market. And as I understand it, the property is within the sphere of influence of the sanitary district? Yes. And our normal procedure would be that you apply to the sanitary district, get annexed, and then get the sewer service. In this case, they want the sewer, sewer service first, and it's quite, not quite sure that annexation then will take place. Uh, only if you condition it. Okay. So um, from reading the documentation, I, knew, I see no evidence of an emergency whatsoever. What I see is there's an old septic tank that probably needs to be replaced, and, and I think that that makes sense. But I, I don't see why we can't simultaneously go forth with starting the construction to lay the sewer line there and annexation to the district. So it occurs at the same time. And so I, I, at least I would be moving for that kind of solution to this one. Um, and I think the other matters that you recommend on page five make sense to me. But I would rather see the annexation at least be filed with us before authorization to construct the sewer begins. Because we have very little other kind of handhold over that once we authorize the uh, outside sewer agreement. Yes, Commissioner Arnold. Where is Margarita Drive? It says in the County Club Community Clear Agenda is off, off Point San Pedro. So that's called the country club area? Right. Okay. Jeff, if you put that into a motion, I would second that. Okay. I'll put that into a motion that we approve this with the conditions in five and that construction doesn't begin until an application for annexation to the sewer district is received and filed by Marin Lafco. Can I ask the staff have any comment on that motion? Uh, no, but I do think, and thank you, Commissioner Arnold. Uh, as a related issue and on the topic of fee waivers and or reductions, um, if you look at 2B, one of the issues we flagged for the commission is how to deal with 
arguably a double charge. So the applicant has paid us a fee for the outside service extension uh, and that review that goes into it. Um, I am recommending in my conditions, and that's why I just want to highlight this, that the fee that they, are, they owe us for the annexation that the commission is saying you need to file before we uh, finalize the outside service approval is, is given a credit for the money that they have already paid LAFCO, and I just want to make sure that's agreeable. Okay, thank you. Seems fair. That would be f fair to the motion maker. Yes, yes Chris. Uh, in my microphone, uh, Commissioner Burdick. <laughs> uh, but to repeat the question, the ar other areas that are not shaded in green, are they in the sanitation district? No. So those are the other parcels in this quad of country uh, club that are also presumably on septic and waiting annexation at some point. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And uh, I will a ask for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? The motion passes. Thank you. And we will go to the uh, job description for the new administrative analyst position. Keen. So this is my personal favorite agenda item of the evening. So. Uh, before the commission is uh, a request for you to take your very last uh, uh, game plan step, if you will, on the commission side in getting uh, a new analyst position on board with Marin Lafco, uh, specifically what we're looking for uh, approval this evening is that you approve a job description and a pay and benefit package that we have created uh, for an administrative analyst position who would be brought on with a specific task of helping us uh, with our ever-present uh, study work. Uh, and as we've talked about in different iterations over the last uh, several months, you know, the need for the uh, analysts is born again from this directive and this interest of the commission to advance your study work while also doing it in a manner that reconciles with your available resources. And certainly as I detail in the report, uh, in my estimation, bringing in essentially an entry-level analyst uh, really is the best bang for the buck in attacking uh, your study requirements and avoiding really the uncertainties tied to bringing in uh, and finding the consultant, uh, which as my uh, brethren from the uh, other Bay Area LAFCOs have reported, it's not that easy right now. With the improved economy, uh, consultants are hard to find and even harder to find on maybe doing work that is not as uh, lucrative as general plan updates or uh, other uh, activities. So uh, with respect to the, the, the job description itself, which I believe is attachment three, um, certainly the commission is asked to make sure that you're comfortable with the wording, comfortable with the outlining of expectations and duties. Uh, to kind of sum it up, uh, we're looking, and hopefully it's captured, uh, to bring in uh, someone who doesn't necessarily have any uh, direct job experience, but does have at least a four-year degree in a related uh, field and has an acclimation towards public policy and or planning. And obviously, you know, good knowledge of USC football is a given. I didn't even have to put that in there. Uh, but um, uh, USC, thank you, Mr. Burdick. Um, the pay scale, at last thing I want to make a comment on, uh, it directly uh, uh, is drawn from a comparable position with the County of Marin, uh, their own administrative analyst position. And so you can see on the very last page a five-step uh, uh, merit process. So again, if you're agreeable tonight, uh, that would be the last uh, request I would have of you, and then it would free staff up to go about a recruitment. Okay. Um, any questions of the executive officer? Um, Commissioner Murray. So, Keen, I, I think you addressed it, but I, I, I know members of the public may ask this. So, if LAFCO does work every five years in terms of updating documents and things, how, is there enough work for an additional staff member 
uh, at an analyst position versus just ramping up during this five-year period uh, and, and your response to that? The work is there. Certainly every year you look at your work plan and then every five years, presumably your study uh, schedule, uh, we can revise uh, and amend, if necessary, the budgeted hours, and that would be the tool. But in terms of certainly the next several years that I can see, you're going to have the work. It's just an option. Do you want to uh, outsource uh, it to a consultant, or do you want to uh, use inside uh, uh, or in-house resources? I was just going to say that when the Hertzberg Act was adopted and required these five-year reviews, the commission hired a, a uh, planning assistant to help do that with the assumption of once they were done, that was it. Uh, and it's not it. Uh, it's ongoing. Uh, it doesn't stop. And so this is sort of catching up with reality, at least in my judgment. And at our last uh, planning retreat, we said we wanted to keep this cycle every five years going to be consistent with the law. So. It, we're back to where we were when we first began this process, it seems to me. Um, I got Craig and then Carla and Judy. Did you want to say something? So, yeah. so sure? Keen, besides the MSRs and SOIs and, and that five year process on a regular basis in terms of applications and things, you're seeing this position helping out. Um, yeah, and certainly we and we provide that in the description that yes, the, the major work would be governmental study work the municipal service reviews and so on, but also general staff support, uh, assisting with proposals, and then also assisting with special projects as the commission may uh, find uh, beneficial. Uh, for example, we have a policy direction to work on uh, um, uh, dis uh, disadvantaged unincorporated communities. Um, that's going to take staff resources. So there's an example where uh, an, an entry-level analyst would do a lot of the, the groundwork. So island annexations, there's been other, other things we're looking at, and, uh, and also some of the new state legislature that's actually coming through uh, Marin um, that may create additional work. You're seeing that the, this person could be working on those items. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. We also might take another look at polishing up the logo. I think that uh, <laughs> that... Uh, oh, no. That <laughs> he didn't get what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Carla, I'm okay. sorry. No, that's all right. No, I just wanted to say that um, that Commissioner Arnold and former Commissioner Dennis Rodoni and I went over this and spent a lot of time on it. And for the ambitious work plan that we have thrust on Keene um, and the expectations, the water study, and the fact that once we reach the end of the cycle, we start all over again, um, we really felt that it was warranted just so that we could actually get accomplished what what we wanted to. And I think it's yeah. it really helps to ensure the quality of work that we get from the whole staff with getting yeah. somebody in addition. And I would urge that everybody um, go along with this. Is that a motion? Uh, sure. If this is a second. And that's okay. the second. So uh, the motion is to approve the um, administrative analyst position and the duties descriptions and the pay scale that's commensurate with the comparable county pay scale and duties, which is consistent then with our policies. Um, so uh, all those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? And all of a sudden we have a staff of two and three quarters. Okay. Report from the Policy Committee on comprehensive update to the policies, procedures, and guidelines. Uh, Keen? Do you want to say anything on that first? Well, just to, uh, to perhaps provide a, an umbrella comment as you go forward, uh, Chair, and the rest of the policy committee. So what the commission has before it is kind of a, a, a two-fold report. We wanted to bring back uh, a, um, some corrections slash revisions as well as some comments that we received 
on the regulatory policies that we initially brought to you at your last meeting and then we sent out for uh, agency review and also posted a, a notice up on our website. Uh, and so we've come back with just a couple of changes based on uh, not only you know, direct comments from uh, those who have provided it, but just further reflection upon uh, or pre performed by the committee itself. Uh, and those two changes, I should say, two specific changes are outlined on page four and five of the agenda report. And again, those are to your regulatory policies. And so hopefully if the commission is agreeable, uh, we'll put that phase of the update up on the shelf and we'll keep going and that means uh, the second to last section that you have uh, as part of the entire update is how you want to look at your planning policies and that makes up the bulk of the staff report um, and we've highlighted in the agenda report uh, I believe one two three four six six specific changes that we think warrant at least um, a little more queue time with the Commission um, before again if you're agreeable we'll send this out for an, uh, its own review and then come back to you at a future meeting um, the upshot is Commission you're getting close I think by December you'll be all done with the update uh, the, the, the work after this is uh, the policy committee uh, commissioners uh, uh, Baker verdict and Blanchfield have to do a little work on our HR uh, activities and that's it um, staff's part is essentially done um, it's just the policy committees has the last part so if there were questions uh, if you'd like me to go through them in a more detailed way or if the if the committee would like to uh, uh, take the uh, ball and run with it uh, your call chair well as I understand it phase two the regulations we went through we send them out sent them out to folks and we made the changes so it's basically been vetted through the Commission Yes. And um, we are putting it on the shelf to be looked at when we get them all together Correct. for one last time. And this includes the changes we made from here Absolutely. last time around. Absolutely. And so one of, the co one of the substantive feedbacks we got from the commissioners, and we've outlined it on page five, is uh, we've amended our new policy on unincorporated uh, islands uh, to no longer have a standalone statement about LAFCA working with the cities and counties on a comprehensive island annexation program. So that's been stricken. The other comments about, uh, hey, whenever there's a chance to eliminate island, that's a good thing, uh, and defining substantially surrounded makes sense. Let's do that at another time. Those stay. I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Arnold. So then the... Um these attachments, attachment one and two, who, Get a mic. whose comments? Oh, oh. oh. Uh, and, and I apologize. So attachment, uh, so we got uh, a total of two comments uh, in, the, in the process of the review. Attachment one is uh, hand uh, notated uh, comments from uh, North Marin Water District. And I was so impressed he went, Krista Gabriel went through these pages and hand wrote them. I thought the commission should see them too. And then the second attachment the, uh, is from uh, Bellinas Public Utility District, oh, Jennifer. Jennifer Blackman. Great. And, and we certainly, uh, the committee certainly appreciates their efforts in looking through these. My question is on, uh, on the Krista Gabriel comments on page 52. He said reference to Moraine Countywide plan at least ties urban center yeah. to a map. Yeah. Um, the, the countywide plan does not mention urban centered. It mentions city center corridor, but city. urban is not a good word. <laughs> city center <laughs> corridor. Environmental. No, corridor. just city centered corridor. <laughs> and Commissioner Arnold, the committee did spend quite a bit of time, and basically yeah. our policy question was your baseline is right now you reference the county general plan. Um, the committee felt it was appropriate to kind of create our own standalone language. Chris's comment was, well, do you have a map that goes with your language? I and see. the committee ultimately decided, you know, uh, it's kind of a, a word of art, uh, city-centered. Uh, so we've used the phrase, the 101 corridor, which I, and I get immediately. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. So practically, they're pretty much the same. Yeah. But it allows the commission to have control over what it means and interpret what it means. 
and the county to do so the, similar. So the, so the commission is going to say uh, city-centered? Is that, is that what no. you said? No, it's urban, what is it? Mm -hmm. Highway 101. Or door. That's fine. That's, That's okay. perfect. Urban, we don't use. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Right. That's, That's good. Thank you. <laughs> right. That's the new word. <laughs> right. So. Thank you. Does that yep. respond That's adequately? Yeah. So anyway, Keen, what you try to do is take the comments and wherever possible work them into the document that we reviewed here. And in most cases, they are accommodated as I understand it, yes. or responded to. So today, this evening, we look at phase three, which deals with planning matters. That is one of the attachments, where it's the primary attachment. And is that? Is that a call for a vote? And you've outlined the, what you feel are the six major issues with that phase three on page six and seven of your staff report? Correct, and we've summarized really the, 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 the connections in our analysis section. And again, what we're looking for the commission today is uh, not to do yes or no, but to say, okay, uh, these seem reasonable enough to go out for public review. Um, and then we'll come back just as we did for the regulatory policies, tell you what we heard from the uh, public, and then if there's any c revisions on the committee's part, we'll talk about it then. And this language has been vetted through the policy committee and passed on to the commission for review? Correct. Okay. I just don't, I want to make sure everybody understands that. So I'll be glad to process. say, okay, this has been vetted by the committee and is ready to go out to the public. Okay. Okay. That's a motion. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's the second. Is, is everybody comfortable with that, or would you rather go through line by line? Um, so, uh, we have a motion and second to accept the policy phase of the Commission's guidelines and procedures and send them out to agencies in the county for review and comment. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the motion. It's been seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? The motion passes and we will send them out. Now, the next item is the legislative report. Uh, thank you, Chair. This will be very quickly. I, because this did perk everyone's interest at our last meeting, I wanted to give an update on the water consolidation bill uh, that was part of the governor's budget approval for uh, this year, the state uh, uh, um, governor. Um, if you recall, um, they attached a, a trailer bill that would empower the State Water Resources Control Board uh, with a new authority to be able to consolidate both public and or private water systems together based on some criteria that is to be um, drafted and prepared at a later date. I did want to share with the commission that it did ultimately get chaptered as part of Senate Bill 88. However, a substantive change did occur in the 72 hours it went from print to enrollment, and that is it reduced the scope of those agencies that could be potentially affected to only those uh, water systems within uh, disincorporated, uh, excuse me, disadvantaged unincorporated communities, otherwise known as ducks. And this has been this evolving term of art uh, for all land use authorities, but certainly with LAFCO. Uh, there's only two ducks in Marin County, um, Alto and um, uh, Marin City, and so there's not really going to be an emphasis point uh, for us, um, but certainly if you're in the Central Valley, if you're in Porterville, uh, this is going to empower the state to go down a path of forcing consolidation. So um, for Marin LAFCO, I think you're off the hook, but certainly other LAFCOs are still very concerned. Okay. And that is it. Okay. Uh, do you have a report, Keen, other than the legislative report? 
Uh, just to uh, a heads up, uh, so I know I will be attending the CalAFCO annual conference between September 2nd and 4th, and I know Supervisor uh, slash uh, Member Sears is also going to be joining me for one day on a presentation. It's not too late, members. If you are interested in attending, uh, let Candace know and we can make the arrangements. And that is it. Okay. Sacramento. Oh, okay. At the? At the Hyatt. Hyatt. Hyatt on Capitol Park. Okay, uh, any commissioner have announcement or request? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to our next meeting, which is September 10th, 2015, here at 7.30. Move to adjourn. We've got a motion to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, we're adjourned. Now, remember, no, I was. I'm, I am a